Welcome to another episode of The, the Epic, Epic Family, Family Road, Road Trip. Trip, the Empty Nest Edition. In 2016, we sold almost everything we own, and we took our three teenage kids on an epic family road trip around North America and the world. We knew we could always make more money, but we could never get back time. As a family, we valued time more than money, and experiences more than things. Along the way, our kids grew up into awesome young adults while developing the entrepreneurial skills and life experiences that have set them on their own adventurous paths. In our new chapter as Empty Nesters, our adventure continues both off the grid at our cabin in the wilderness and on the road exploring distant places in our well-equipped expedition truck. Leaving Side Bay after a couple of wonderful days of bliss. What an awesome place! We're so excited uh, to share it with the boys so they can come on their bikes uh, one of these days. But that's um, a three hour drive from uh, the nearest town through, you know, decent, sometimes bumpy, but pretty decent uh, logging roads. And then to get on the beach, you're going to want a high clearance 4x4. The sand is really soft, but definitely drivable and there's lots of place to camp outside of the uh, the tide uh, you know high 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 and dry outside of the tide so now we're heading back uh, to carry on our journey across Canada off we go Past the cutoff where we came out of the mountains um, on the way here. We took the adventurous route on the way in and we're taking the regular route on the way out which more follows the river. There are some elevation uh, gains and things like that but it's much more gentle. So that adventurous route if you're looking for an amazing trail but it's really mostly a jeep trail. The Ross Monster did amazing on it. 
but there were some very very steep climbs and some very steep descents so with the big truck I just took it took my time put it in four-wheel drive with a Jeep it would be probably easier but it's a beautiful route and uh, but a lot of very very high shelf roads very narrow shelf roads but anyway there's two options for getting in here I think I said earlier only take this lower route in the winter don't take that that other one in the winter it can be very dangerous up there back down to the um, estuary or, or the inlet area but um, this this version of the trail coming the long way around is uh, just a magnificent British Columbia mountain road you go to some pretty great elevations up there and uh, some steep descents but it is a wider road than the trail we were on and a little more well maintained so it's very doable and uh, pretty exciting to ride. We spent one more night at the beautiful waterfall camp before heading south the next morning. Good morning everyone, we are having a coffee on the road this morning, we just want to get a jump start on about a six hour drive to the little town of Tofino, that's our plan is to get into Tofino today, one of our favorite places on the coast as well, um, 
and uh, we're going to take you over there with us. We spent a winter out there, and now it'd be super fun to go in the summer and just check the place out. We're not going to stay too long, but it's one of those places we want to make sure we don't miss as we um, go on our big overland adventure across Canada. So in the background we're just airing back up the tires to 65 pounds of pressure on each one. We had them down to 40 and the reason we do that is uh, when we're on those bumpy back roads with, with all kinds of rocks and potholes and everything, it makes the ride a lot smoother so all your stuff inside isn't rattling all over the place or your, uh, your brains aren't rattling out of your head. So we've been off pavement for quite a while now and we're just going to do a section of on pavement so we're getting them back up to 65. And that uh, is easier on the tires when you're on pavement, plus better on fuel economy. So this truck is equipped with two ARB dual compressors. So it's got lots of power to pump your tires back up with a convenient jack on the front bumper and one in the back. And we have an ARB hose, which actually reaches all the way around. I'm gonna go check our pressure. Really well. So we came up from the south part of the island, all along here, right up past Port Hardy, worked our way in the back country here to Holtbird, and then went up to Cape Scott. We actually took a, a big road <laughs> all the way up to about here, or maybe it was up here somewhere. Went back to Cape Scott, and then we came down and camped at Grants Bay. That was beautiful. And then we went up and back to Winter Harbor, which is a really cool little town if you ever get up here. And then, then all the way back up to St. Joseph, and we camped along that little lake. Uh, not Kings Lake, it was right here, not Wadi. That's where the, the batteries died. Then we went back to Port Hardy, got new batteries, and now we drove all the way down to Port Alice, except we didn't take the highway, we did the backcountry route through here in here and then we actually went all through the mountains here to side bay that's where we could drive on the on the right on the beach next we're gonna leave uh, port alice here and, and work our way back to the more southern part of the island so we're for now we're done with the northern part of the island it's been incredible uh, just a wild place um, so many lakes and rivers in the back country that we want to explore we'll definitely be back um, even uh, Raft Cove is uh, a section we didn't have time to check out, but it's, you know, white sand beaches. And Anyway, the north part of the island is just spectacular, and there's a lot more that we'd like to see. Tons of eagles, and we saw, what, nine, ten bears just on that one drive in there. Um, deer, bull elk. Wonderful, wonderful trip. So thank you, North Island, uh, for your hospitality. And now we're heading to the South Island before making our way to the mainland. So the Great Canadian Overland Adventure continues.
didn't get far, as uh, always happens up here. We're, we're on a six hour journey. It'll probably be 12 hours because we keep seeing these wreck sites and you know we just want to stop and check them out and mark them down for later usage. And for you, if you're in this area, this is called the Marble River Wreck Site. And behind us is the Marble River. And there's beautiful camp spots. Whenever you hear of a BC recreational site, what they are is little campgrounds that are free. It's pretty much dispersed camping, except they usually have a picnic table and a fire pit, and they're in beautiful places. So if we weren't moving on, this would be an amazing camp spot right here. We just drove through the loop, and there's tons of camp spots. So check this place out, Marble River Recreation Site. The places that are on the west coast of the island you definitely can't drive between them. You have to go all the way back to the east and take a route south and then go wind your way all the way back out to the west coast. But that uh, that keeps them remote and that's just the way the lay of the land is. I mean, I've, as you saw what we were traveling through, you get yourself into the mountains really quick. But uh, reminds us a lot of New Zealand, kind of the flora and fauna of a rainforest area and the windy roads. Another thing about coming back to a place more than once I think is so important. Uh, we came in the winter which is the rainy season so I remember pulling into Port Allison and, and thinking to myself wow what a cold and gloomy place but that is not the case coming back in the summer it's been nothing but bright sunshine beautiful lakes the weather is just perfect um, it's not rainy or gloomy at all and it's definitely not cold and the eagles are flying above and it's just an absolute piece of paradise so I, I'm so thankful we've had the opportunity to see these places both summer and winter so something to keep in mind when you're exploring a place so just to give you an update on the battery situation um, we had one dead battery and we don't know what caused it to uh, fail but um, what we did is replace both batteries even though the one the other one was still fine um, the a truck of this size needs both batteries to, to start so we put in two brand new uh, Napa batteries and we haven't had a problem ever since that looks like we solved the problem we kept the other good battery and we have it in the back just in case uh, we can use it as a booster uh, something to boost from if we had to but so far so good the truck starts easily every morning and uh, back on the road. Good morning guys, we got up early this morning and hit the road and halfway down the road we got hungry and there's a little town of Port Hardy here so we're just stopping for a quick breakfast and then we're going to carry on. Port McNeil, that's where we are. Well that is a really cozy breakfast joint so if you're ever here Bon Appetit Family Restaurant. They take good care of you. Well, we have to keep on going down the road, but I love these little stops. Everywhere you go here is a hike or a view of something spectacular. So at least we can stretch our legs a little bit.
guys, we're here in Cofino and we're just driving around town remembering this beautiful place. We spent the winter here in 21 and uh, it was a lot quieter and <laughs> a lot fewer vehicles, that's for sure, than now. This is a popular place. We're going to a little barbecue joint, I think it's on the beach, called Lil Ronnie's. And uh, on their Instagram account they show the most delicious looking um, brisket and all that stuff and we really since we've been out of the south we haven't had a good barbecue meal so we're looking forward to that I hope you guys are hungry So after a long day's drive, nothing better than some awesome barbecue. We've got brisket, uh, ribs, and coleslaw, and it's time to dig in. they got some live music in the back, which is a bonus. Little Ronnie's and Pepino. Well, that was one of the best barbecue places I've ever been to. The best outside of Texas. <laughs> yeah. So that was a lot of fun. Now we're going to go and find our camp spot at Cirque Grove Campground. So. The party's just getting started here, so we really shouldn't be leaving, but we are on a mission. And we want to walk the beach at Cirque Grove. It's Cox Beach. We spent a whole winter there, if you recall, and we just want to get back there. So we're heading that way. As you know, we don't stay in campgrounds much, but when it comes to Surf Grove or in the famous surf beach, Cox Beach right here, the campground is an amazing place. And then we, we stayed a whole winter off and on um, in 21, and uh, they've continually improved this place. So if you're looking for an amazing place to stay right in Tofino, um, check out Surf Grove Campground. It's amazing. Surfers are already out on the water. It doesn't get much better than this. There's something about this whole town. It's uh, surf and fishing and hiking. Everything adventure, I guess. Coffee's good. Food is good. The people are super nice. It has to be in my top five places that we've ever been to brings back a lot of memories with the kids. The beautiful Surf Grove Campground is nestled among the trees, just steps from Canada's number one surf beach, Cox Bay. Whether you're into surfing or you just want to relax by the ocean, camp with the sound of the waves and hike along the beach surrounded in natural splendor, this place should be on your destination list.
collected some shells at the other beach we were at. And I'm making this uh, shell necklace for Peter's boat. On this trip, I'm gonna try and collect little things for each of the kids and make them something to bring back. Well, I found this beautiful shell. And then I didn't realize that it was still alive, so the bag stinks like bleh. But look at it <laughs> washed up. I'll get something to shine all the shells up so it's like really glossy. So there you have it. It's all done. I hope he likes it. It's been a beautiful stay here at Surf Pro and it brought back a lot of memories and new ones. It never disappoints. Right, so we left uh, Tofino. We had a great time there. It's such an amazing place. Um, a lot busier in the summer than in the winter, but still uh, worth the visit. And now we've driven three hours roughly from the west coast on the Pacific to the east coast in a town called Comox. We're going to board a ferry in about an hour that will take us across to the mainland. So we're leaving the island. Um, it's been an amazing time here. We've really enjoyed it. So much remote country that we've been able to explore and uh, a lot more to explore when we come back. But we're excited to get onto the mainland now and begin our eastward journey. Um, we're gonna have to decide tonight once we get to camp where we're gonna go in BC because it's so massive. We're gonna have to just pick some, some, uh, some points and uh, some backcountry trails. But we're gonna continue this journey what we're calling the Great Canadian Overland Adventure, and we're taking you with us. All right, we're on the, what's it called? The Orca, the Salish Orca, I believe. Looks like a pretty big boat. It's got two layers of vehicles. And we're crossing the Powell River. It's a small community in BC, which is only accessible by ferry. Um, it, I talked to a fellow that lives there and he said, you know, it's not an island, but it feels like an island because you can only get there by boat. So we're gonna spend probably one night in that area and then continue down what's called the uh, Sunshine Coast. And there's actually three ferries to get to the bottom of this road. Check that the bottom strap is around the middle of your back, not your waist. And tuck the remainder strap behind your back. We are still young in the hearts. Still
We're almost at Powell River. It was about an hour sailing across. Um, met some great people that gave us a lot of information. Saw a couple of humpback whales. It's a nice ride. Let's, let's uh, get the truck started and get ready to disembark. Find a fuel station, even though we got half a tank. I just don't know how far it'll be to the next one. So we're gonna fuel up and then go find a place to camp for the night. One option is a uh, provincial park down near the ferry site. So um, I was talking to one gentleman. He said you can't book the next ferry. You just have to show up. little trailhead just up from the ferry terminal and uh, we just parked there last night had such a good seat that wow I slept super heavy but um, we've got to get lined up looks like they're already lining up for the ferry which runs at 730 so we are gonna get in line and see if we can get on the first crossing second crossing second crossing actually one went at 530 I didn't realize but yeah, that's what we're doing. We're right by the terminal now, so hopefully we'll get on and we'll carry on down the Sunshine Coast. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day. Huh. Looks like we're the first ones here, but I guess six, yeah, huh. only an hour wait before it goes. So, day and eight. Now we can have our coffee. We can enjoy our coffee and look at the beautiful view. We must have really learned our lesson that one time. <laughs> now we're the first ones in line. Here we can get an overhead view of the uh, truck and it uh, looks like we've collected a, quite a bit of dust on our solar panels so we'll, we'll have to find a place to uh, wash it when we, when we get a chance. second ferry on the Sunshine Coast. The first one takes you from the island to Powell River and then this one is from 
where we camped last night to a place called Earl's Cove and that's on another island and we go across that island and then take a ferry to the mainland again just in North Vancouver. And from there we're cutting north in, into uh, central BC. We could have gone farther south on Vancouver Island and then crossed right to Vancouver from Nanaimo or all the way down to Victoria but we've never done the what's called the Sunshine Coast which is what we're doing now and, and that's why we went this route. It maybe takes a bit longer but it's uh, gorgeous scenery and it's a place we wanted to check off our list.
we're officially on mainland BC now. We've completely left the island and all the little islands and we're going to start heading inland. This is called the Sea to Sky Highway and it's all along this absolute epicness. It's a beautiful drive. We've actually never been here so we're loving it so far. You can see white capped mountains and glaciers in the distance and then this huge waterway which we follow up for a couple of hours at least. It's been a long day of travel, and we pull over to find a camp spot for the night along the beautiful Cayuse River. This is our first night on the mainland, and we are excited about the road ahead. Join us next week as we venture into the rugged and wild Chilcotin country of British Columbia, Canada. And in the meantime, we'll, we'll see you down, down the road. road.